Hi, I'm Sarah from Dolls and Daydreams, and today I'm going to be talking about my top six favorite hand embroidery stitches for doll faces. Now, if you're a beginner, I suggest you watch this whole video all the way through. Don't worry, I'll be starting with the easiest stitch. If you're here for a recap, don't worry, I have all the links to each stitch down below. So what you're going to need is a sharp needle, some embroidery floss, I'll be using three strands for this tutorial, some good quality cotton, a embroidery hoop, but it's not 100% necessary. I also embroider on stuffed doll faces, and I also embroider on just plain fabric. And of course, a doll face. Now, all of my hand embroidery doll faces are designed to be super easy so that even a beginner can have really high quality, very, very cute results. As you can see from this cute little Wendy poppet, they're very, very simple shapes. And don't be afraid, <laughs> by the end of this tutorial, you will be able to do this with your eyes closed. Well, maybe not closed. <laughs> All of my tutorials also come with felt appliques, so therefore if you're not comfortable with the fill stitch yet, you can always just pop a little felt applique nose on or the round eyes. It makes it super fast and easy. We have our sharp needle with our double knot at the end of three strands of embroidery thread. We're going to start with the back stitch. This is one of the easiest stitches. Working from left to right, we're going to pull our thread up and go over a stitch length. Stab the needle into the fabric and pull it through the other side. Next, we're going to push the needle up a stitch length away, pull the thread through and place the needle in the end of the previous stitch, right in that exact hole and pull it through. Put your needle through a stitch length away, pull your thread through again, and back into the last hole that we created with the last stitch. And continue the stab method to the end of your practice line. This creates a nice tight stitch that you can use for curves and outlines and is very, very handy and incredibly easy. The second method I'm going to be teaching you with the back stitch we're going to be stitching from right to left. Pull your needle up at the beginning of the stitch, go over a stitch length, and instead of stabbing it through to the back, we're going to pass it through a stitch length ahead of itself, placing the needle back into the hole we had just created from the last stitch, and you go along in a line like this. So again, go back down with the tip of your needle to the end of the previous stitch, and go along underneath the fabric and pull through. I find this method a lot faster. However, it can be a little less accurate in very tight spaces. If you're left-handed, it will be much easier to work from left to right using this second method of stitching the back stitch. This is the outline stitch and we will be working from left to right. For the entire time, we will be keeping our thread above the line. Pull the thread up and through, hold it above the line with one hand, go across a stitch length, go through to the back, and then come up about halfway through that initial stitch. Hold the thread above the line, again go a stitch length away, bring your needle up in the end of the previous stitch, and pull through. Again, you're going to keep your thread above the line, slide the needle through the fabric, come out at the end of the previous stitch and pull through. The entire time you want to make sure that your thread is always above your line. This is a fabulous outlining stitch and it's nice and tight and gives a very clean line. This stitch is excellent for curves. It is a tighter stitch than the stem stitch and it will give a narrower overall look to your stitches. You will notice though, it is exactly the same method we will be using for the stem stitch, which is next, except our working thread will be kept underneath the line the entire time. Now this is the stem stitch. This is my favorite stitch for outlining. 
So we're going to start by pulling our thread up through on our line and going across a stitch length. We'll be holding our working thread below the line this time. Go back by half a stitch length and come up through the fabric. Now go back across and over another stitch length. We'll be then coming back through the fabric in the hole from our last previous stitch. So it's exactly the same method as the outline stitch, except our working thread is below the line. This creates a thicker overall outline and I much prefer it because it really stands out, especially on fabrics with a bit more um, texture, such as a fleece. It is particularly lovely on curves. You can really see the individual stitches, which again, I really prefer because it looks super handmade and it just adds that bit more of character to the finished doll. So to recap, we have the back stitch, we have the outline stitch, and we have the stem stitch. You can really see the difference in the stitches here, and hopefully this will help you pick the right stitch for your next project. To tie off the back of any of these stitches, you're going to want to pass your needle through the last stitch that you made, create a large loop, thread your needle through it, and then create a knot, pulling the knot securely and tightly down onto that last stitch. Then pass your needle through the back stitches and pull the thread out. Trim the thread close to the other stitches. This will ensure that the thread will not be seen from the front of your dolly after you stuff it. Now onto the satin stitch. This is a fill stitch and it's excellent for cheeks, round eyes and anything that needs to be filled, for example lips. There are a number of methods used to create the satin stitch. I'm going to show you mine. I find this really helps to create a lovely crisp outline. Start by outlining your shape with the back stitch. I'm going to be working along the top horizontally and going from one side of my outline to the other. The next stitch will start directly below the stitch that we've just stitched out on the inside of your outline. So basically what we're doing is we're stacking our stitches closely together to create a fill. Now continue to stitch horizontally across your design until you reach the bottom. The key here is to keep your stitches at the same angle. And that's it finished. It's actually slightly raised and it has a lovely definite outline. Right, onto the padded satin stitch. You can either work horizontally or vertically across the other stitches we have already created. I will be working horizontally. Bring your first stitch up on the outside of your outline. Go over to the opposite side and go down on the outside of that outline again. And that's our first stitch. We will be stacking our stitches one under the other from one side to the other, but on the outside of our outline this time. This creates a lovely raised and very puffy solid fill. If you laid your initial satin stitches down vertically instead of horizontally as I did, and then laid these padded stitches on top horizontally, your overall look will be much more fuller and higher. And it's done. It is a really lovely shape and a wonderful, wonderful texture on the surface of your fabric. Next is the French knot. I find this stitch incredibly handy, especially for plush toys. They make great little whisker dots and also little eyes. Pull your thread up through the fabric, hold on to the thread and wrap it around your needle twice. Place the tip of the needle right next to the hole you came up through the fabric, but not into it. Still holding the other thread, push your needle through the fabric and out behind it. Still holding onto the thread, pull your needle through with the thread and slowly pull it into the knot itself and then let go of your thread right at the end and ta-da, you have a French knot. Okay, let's make another one. Pull your thread up through the fabric, hold onto that thread, wrap it around your needle twice, 
and then place the tip of the needle back into the cotton right next to that initial hole that you came through and pull it through to the back. Whilst you're still holding onto the thread, pull it through to the back and slowly create your knot. These easy stitches add lovely texture to your softies. Right, now you need to congratulate yourselves on learning six new stitches to make dolls and softies with. Well done, I'm so proud of you. I really hope this has helped and the next time you make a dolly or softie, you give hand embroidery a go. It is so much fun and gives a lovely texture to your finished doll. Don't forget to tune in next week for another episode of Dolls and Daydreams TV. Please subscribe, we have new tutorials every week and we love making dollies. Give me a thumbs up and a comment down below and of course please link to any Dolls and Daydreams patterns that you have made or pop them in my Facebook group. Take care and very happy sewing.